first time this has ever been shown outside the lab, is that right? Yes, you yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, if it all goes wrong. Uh, yeah, will we project it in a minute? Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'll try not to look at that, it's quite disturbing. Uh, <laughs> we get yeah, the lights so, down. So I've, I've shown it's, it's using acoustics, so it's a, it's a sound wave based device, so it wouldn't work in space, that's the slightly disappointing <laughs> element of it, because sound waves don't travel in space. But similar things have actually been done on a much smaller scale with light, which could be applicable uh, in space. But anyway, given that restriction that we're, we're here on Earth, it's an earthly, earthly bit of physics, uh, it's still pretty cool. Yeah, the first time it's been shown, probably you can see it's a plank of wood here. Uh, that isn't really a key part of it. That's just the, that's just the handle. Uh, but uh, if we turn it around, uh, can we focus on that a bit? Yeah. So uh, the, the, the main bit is, is, is these things here, which are little loudspeakers. It's, when I switch it on, will run at 40 kilohertz, so you shouldn't hear anything. Your ears shouldn't be able to hear 40 kilohertz. Your ears can hear up to a maximum of about 20 kilohertz, so it's about twice as high a frequency as you can hear. If there are any bats in here, they really should be ushered out at this point. <laughs> uh, probably shouldn't have been in here either. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, they, they'll probably not like this too much. That's exact, this is exactly the sort of frequency range where they, they hunt for prey in their echolocation. Uh, right, so uh, where do we start? We're, uh, I've got a... Oh, you can't really see those. I've got a packet of little things that I'm going to levitate. I'll get, get, get <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll take if it doesn't work. Uh, Would you like me to hold something? I'll, can you put the house lights up a touch? It might help everything come out a bit better. So, uh, it sorts itself out. Okay, here we go. Right, so, uh, yeah, uh, what's, what's different about this from other ones that we that I've made and shown is that this is genuinely a tractor beam and what makes it a tractor beam is that it can attract things so this where all these speakers are the sound is firing out in this direction and we're going to pull things back towards us that's the kind of I don't know if you thought about it but that's the definition of a tractor beam to attract something back to the source so some of you might have seen although probably not uh, acoustic levitation as a basic phenomena and there they tend to do it in a simple standing wave where there's a a, a, a transducer, a loudspeaker and a reflector and you set up a standing. Has anyone seen that? Few people have seen it, yeah. So it's a really cool demo and that's what I've usually shown which pretty much always works. But that isn't a tractor beam because you've got to get both sides of the object. To, for it to be a beam, it's got to be going in one direction, it's got to pull something back. So that's levitation but not a tractor beam. But this is a tractor beam. So this is the first live demonstration in a planetarium in Bristol <laughs> Friday afternoon. No, it's not. This is the world's first demonstration of an acoustic tractor beam out of the lab. Uh, okay, so I will, uh, let's go for it. So the, all, all these things that, all these other bits and pieces, it's a, it's a battery, a little bit of an amplifier, and uh, some so a, a, a little controller. Okay, so we switch it on. It appears to be working, as far as I can tell. Uh, <laughs> Then you place a particle in the right place. Oh. Uh, okay. You might be able to see that oh, levitating nice. there. Okay. There's the object levitating, so I can put things underneath it, and it should stay in position. I don't know where the best place of looking at that is. <laughs> Look at it there. You can yeah. you can see it. I just check that's in the right place. Nice. It is. Uh, what we can with with the smaller. So this is about. Uh, two or three millimeters in diameter. And with the smaller ones, the so that it's all being done with sound, the forces due to sound waves. So with this one, it should have sufficient strength to hold it completely upside down. Cool. Whoops, let me get in the light. <laughs> there it is, completely upside down. And with this smaller one, let me just find where the right button is. I've got two buttons. Oh, oh, dear. oh dear. <laughs> it's going so well. Let's try and set that up again. Uh, well, I'll do it like this first because it's a bit easy in holding the thing upside down. So there's a position where you can see it there. I press this button, which will get it to move upwards. And another one, get it to move downwards like that. So we're controlling the sound field and, and the, the little ball is sitting somewhere in that sound field. The, the, the system, 
in principle, if I could drive it a bit harder, which I can't with these, with this system here, could do this up to about uh, 30 centimetres or a foot in front of it. Where's my hand? About that far in front of it. But you can see it's limited about this sort of you know, <coughs> couple of inches, and it just fell out of there. How, how scalable is this? Bruce? It's very scalable in principle. Uh, <laughs> the, there's a key difficulty. Uh, well, there's a couple of difficulties. But there's a, there's, a, there's a key difficulty, which is the f getting the frequency. So this system, getting the frequency right, this system is, let me just get one, I just need, I can't, I'm sure I can seem to be able to talk and, and do levitation at the same time. <laughs> uh, you can do levitation, that's cool enough. There we go. I'll just make, press the reset button, I think. I'm I was about to say, if you tried turning it off and back on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you've got to know, the hard bit is, because you, you can't see a thing, you've got to know where, where the, the trapping point is, and you've got to release the particle exactly the right place. There we go. So that's working again, wherever it is. There's a good place to see. That's working again. Uh, let me just check that it's in the middle. Yeah, that's in the right one. So we should be able to go, oh, let's get it there. Go up and then down. But it, so, I, yeah, I was just saying it can't go that, uh, that far away from the device. Uh, what else is there to say? Oh, I can put some. Oh, did I show it upside down? I did just about. Was that yeah. convincing enough? Yeah. What, I, what I wanted, what, what my dream is always. Let's see if I can get it to work better. They're all the ones that fell out. <laughs> <laughs> so get into the light. Where's the light? Yeah. Now, I think the killer shot is. Oh, the thing there we go. moving up. Oh, yeah. So there, I've tracked it into the mothership. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if I just move it out, I should also, to work upside down, it can do it fine with that small one. It should be able to work, wow, well, find it out. Ah, no, that's, I need the guide particle, so this, I'll give it another go, that's not quite. Uh, the trick here, which is you know done by great uh, sort of magicians, is to sort of keep up some kind of patter going continuously <laughs> whilst you flail and are basically sort of trying to distract people's attention. The that David Blaine of the uh, <laughs> world. Right, that's that's back in the middle again there. So let's uh, give it one more go with my oh, favourite red idea. particle here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't want to do the red part of it. One, one more go, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah this the sound pushing it as well. As so the the so the, the acoustic field. Maybe that's worth uh, describing. And, I, and again, I can't. I like to wave my hands around when I describe acoustic fields, <laughs> which is quite hard. Uh, Steve, could you and, and this, please. but the, the the idea here is the is this sits just like the like the people who said they've seen the standing wave system, the particles sit at the nodes, the places where there's, where there's no, uh, no sound levels, so it's the quiet regions. So this is like a 3D version of that. There's a quiet region there, and surrounding it is a very loud region. So basically, any time it tries to move, it gets blasted back into that quiet region by the loud sound. So this is all based on the idea that a sound wave carries a force with it. So if you've ever uh, been unfortunate enough to be near an explosion or a or a, a gentler version would be a very loud music. You, you can feel a physical force due to sound sometimes. You know, you know explosions can knock people over. This is a much more controlled version of that. So these aren't explosions, but they're high amplitude waves. So they, they're not quite shock waves, but they've distorted the air sufficiently to apply forces on objects from all sides. So it's a quiet center with this very loud core surrounding it. And, oh yeah, you were asking about limits and could it be scaled. So the wavelength of sound at 40 kilohertz is about a centimetre. So at the moment, all the objects we levitate and track in these systems have to be smaller than about half a centimetre, preferably more like a quarter of a centimetre. That's the sort of the restriction. So it could be scaled up. I could, in principle, there's no reason why this couldn't track one of you out of the audience. Uh, do it. <laughs> but, but I'd have to make the wavelengths bigger, which would mean I'd have to drop the frequency. So it would end up being sort of... Uh, hundreds of hertz, which would be a very much an audible, I think middle C is something like 300 or 400 hertz, so it'd be 
a very audible sound and it would be so loud that it would unfortunately deafen you as a side effect. So that's, that would be the, the hit. Let's not do it. That you, <laughs> We've got loads of them. They're expensive. <laughs> you, would, you would be uniquely the first person to ever be levitated. Uh, also, no one's yet made loudspeakers that go that loud, but I think that's, there's no, it's just who'd want to do that. So <laughs> <laughs> I think there's no reason why you can't make loudspeakers that loud. Uh, so that we, if we just did that, invested a bit of money, a million or so, get those loudspeakers, then someone could be levitated. They would have to sacrifice their ears. Uh, if they were already deaf, there would be some interesting ethical questions. I, uh, uh, my... <laughs> I hope I've not offended anyone there. I don't think that's offensive. That's just what would happen if you're in... But the, the other thing, and my calculations, I've only done approximate calculations, there is a heating effect. Mm. And, and so there is a chance you would also be cooked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, calculations, my calculations say you could, you could endure some number of seconds worth of being levitated. But they weren't terribly active. They were sort of back of the envelope calculations. So it could be less than a second. It could be greater than 100 seconds. But uh, classic order of magnitude estimates. Right. So that was quite good. Let's have another go at this. Come on. Oh. Oh, dear. Uh, we, we do have another. We're running out of time. Yeah, apologies. We've, um, we've got Sorry. a question from the audience again through Twitter. It's glitter bees. What would you consider the best use for a handheld portable tractor beam? Uh, apart from demonstrating it to people yeah. here, uh, I mean, I think in itself this isn't desperately useful. It's a, it's a device to show the basic principles. I think the the, the idea of, of moving things. So you know, you can imagine if this was if this was something like a drug capsule or some small medical device. It was in my body, and I wanted to move it around. All these principles would work with a little bit of extra jiggery pokery with inside the human body. Uh, so I think that would be, and it would look probably pretty similar to this. I mean, it would look a bit slicker. You can imagine you go into a hospital <laughs> as you're confronted with something like that. You might not be too happy. I certainly wouldn't be. Uh, but yeah, you just put in a white case, don't you? And, and all of you given. The cosmic uh, shit. Science fact. Science fiction. And everything in between. <laughs>